There's a technology out there that's still underutilized in track spikes. It could boost speed and cut down injury risks significantly. Some argue modern spikes have reached their peak with little room for improvement. Let's look back at the earliest spike designs and see how far we've come. As we can see, the basic principles have remained unchanged over the past 100 years. It's astonishing that a technology designed for grass and dirt tracks remains in use on today's cutting-edge synthetic surfaces. That makes about as much sense as equipping a Formula One car with tractor tires. In the 90s, aluminum spikes gained popularity for their light weight. However, they bent easily and wore out quickly. Observant sprinters noticed that, over time, these spikes would curve slightly toward the heel, a clear sign of sudden braking upon ground contact. Obviously, the sudden braking is highly detrimental, and its negative effects become more pronounced at higher running speeds. Modern research has confirmed that, regardless of a runner's speed, age, or skill level, every athlete contends with a sudden stopping force at touchdown. The graph's downward red line shows this force, while the upward trend reflects the propulsive phase. Interestingly, a slight braking effect occurs even during the first foot strike, particularly among runners who tend to overstride. For elite sprinters, noticeable braking typically begins around the fifth to seventh stride, a phenomenon often accompanied by the distinct clicking sound of their spikes. <laughs> Hypothetically, it's possible to minimize braking, much like a cheetah does, by driving the legs downward very quickly so the foot lands directly beneath the center of mass. However, braking remains inevitable, even for a cheetah, due to fatigue. When sprinters reach top speed, fatigue reduces leg turnover, increasing braking forces. This explains why spikes produce the most jarring sounds near the finish line. Most 100-meter injuries occur in the second half of the race, and for good reason. This is when speed begins to decline and braking forces become more pronounced. This table presents biomechanical analysis data from the 100-meter final at the 2017 World Championships, showing the finalists' foot velocities just before ground contact. The higher the horizontal velocity of the foot at a touchdown, the greater the stress the runner's leg must absorb due to sudden braking forces. Since most sprinters exhibit asymmetry, each leg striking the ground at a different speed, it's easy to predict which leg is more prone to injury. For instance, Usain Bolt's data clearly points to his left hamstring. Similarly, Elaine Thompson shows a significant difference in horizontal foot velocities, which likely contributed to more frequent injuries in her right leg. Yet nature has developed an elegant mechanism to prevent the sudden stop of the foot, virtually eliminating related injuries. The secret? The fastest land animals don't wear spikes, yet they accelerate flawlessly without them. Horses, for instance, land on the sharp edge of their hooves, a technique antelopes execute with remarkable precision. Cats and dogs rely on their claws for propulsion. There is a reason why animals don't need spikes. Smooth soles offer a crucial advantage at high speeds. The foot doesn't come to an abrupt halt upon contact. Instead, it's allowed a slight forward slide, which gradually loads the body's weight onto the supporting leg. This functions much like a disc brake system, where smooth deceleration is achieved through progressive pressure between the pads and rotors. Remarkably, this adaptive loading mechanism remains effective even when humans sprint in sneakers on ice. While the foot may slide slightly forward at touchdown, the vertical force, reaching up to 500 kilograms in elite sprinters, still provides ample traction through compressive friction. The most fascinating phenomenon occurs during push-off, even in track spikes, humans experience a slight backward slip at this stage. In contrast, a horse's hooves dig into the ground, eliminating any rearward movement. Cats also give nothing back. When fully loaded, their distal phalanges extend the claws outward, locking them in place to prevent any backward slippage. So unlike sprinters in spikes, animals may slide slightly forward upon touchdown, but don't slip backward during push-off. Forward motion is permitted. Backward motion is blocked. This principle is common in nature. 
For example, predatory fish have teeth angled inward. Prey can easily enter but cannot escape. Though spikes do appear in nature, on certain insects and lizards, they operate asymmetrically, sliding forward smoothly but gripping only when pushing backward. Snakes use a similar mechanism. Their wave-like muscle contractions propel them forward as their ventral scales reduce friction, while the same scales grip the surface during push-off to prevent backward slippage. This principle has been applied in skis for decades. But the true marvel lies in the claws of the feline family, a masterpiece of biomechanical engineering. Perfectly proportioned according to the golden ratio, equipped with a self-sharpening mechanism, and strong enough to support the animal's full weight, they allow effortless forward motion while locking firmly against backward movement. This could be the perfect solution to replace traditional, hopelessly outdated spikes. Imagine if running shoes allowed a slight, natural forward slide at touchdown, engaging claw-like spikes only during push-off. The immediate benefit? Most injuries would disappear. A sudden stop upon landing places tremendous stress on the body, forcibly stretching the hamstrings while they're actively contracting. Traditional spike shoes disrupt the body's natural shock absorption system, explaining why runners gradually develop issues across the board. Hamstrings, shins, knees, back, feet, and Achilles tendons. Remember, it's not the speed that kills, it's the sudden stop. Interestingly, horse racing also relies on spikes of varying shapes and sizes for different race course conditions. Professionals refer to studs as a necessary evil. They recognize the harm they can cause and use them only when absolutely necessary. Horses run at much higher speeds than humans, so sudden hoof stops put far greater stress on their legs, leading to more severe injuries. Statistics show that racehorses sustain injuries 10 times more frequently than track athletes. Yet studs remain the lesser evil compared to catastrophic falls and fractures, which also occur. With spikes, horses gain better traction on grass and other slippery surfaces, allowing them to run with greater confidence. Unlike horses, humans wear spikes in all weather conditions and on all surfaces. In most scenarios, abandoning spikes might not just be safer, it could actually enhance performance. Compared to the paws of a cheetah, track spikes function in the exact opposite way. They prevent the foot from sliding forward, but allow it to slip backward, contradicting the original purpose of spiked footwear. A fitting comparison is the technology of clap skates, which was initially met with skepticism and even faced calls for a ban due to the perceived unfair advantage. The hinged toe allows skaters to keep the blade on the ice longer, extending the push-off phase through the toes. In sprinting, a similar benefit could be achieved by preventing the toes from slipping backward. The cheetah's claws offer a clue. It's no coincidence they are positioned not on the pads, but at the front edge of the paws. Puma was the first to tap into this insight, incorporating grip claws into their shoes. Despite skepticism and mockery, Karsten Warholm runs faster with their help, joking about the secret without ever giving it away. So a lot of people have been giving us shit about our latest invention, saying it looks stupid, you've tripped a hurdle, you don't have any purposes. Don't you think we've done our research? It has a lot of purposes. Just let me show you. See? The sole design of this shoe suggests the potential for a forward slide upon impact, yet the spikes make this impossible. Puma should be aware of this limitation but is reluctant to abandon spikes completely, as doing so could harm sales of traditional track spikes. When natural spike-free technology is fully integrated into sprinting shoes, it could offer an advantage of up to one centimeter per stride due to forward slide, and another centimeter during push-off, potentially adding up to one meter over 50 strides. Additionally, since sudden foot stops stress and fatigue muscles more quickly, sprinters could maintain top speed for a longer period. This would significantly improve times in longer events like the 400 and 800 meters. Shoe companies have long pursued the perfect spike shoe. For example, ASICS introduced the Metasprint, a pinless track shoe, in 2020. Some elite sprinters adopted it, expecting a speed boost of up to five hundredths of a second in the 100 meters, as claimed in ASIC studies. However, two years later, no significant performance improvements were recorded, and most athletes reverted to traditional spikes. Injury risks didn't decrease either because the Metasprint's grip mimicked that of classic spikes, 
maintaining abrupt foot stops and toe slippage during push-off. Another type of spike shoe, designed for middle distance events, aligns more closely with natural biomechanics. Its sole resembles a hybrid between an antelope's hooves and a cobra's scales. Video reviews on YouTube praise these spikes for their comfort and excellent grip, though many note the high price as a drawback. Using this technology, Mohammed Katir ran 1,500 meters in 329, taking bronze at the World Championships in Eugene, clearly proving the shoe's effectiveness. Despite this, it hasn't gained widespread popularity. Runners are so accustomed to spikes that they struggle to accept the fact that safer and faster option exists. Oddly enough, many simply love the sound of spikes biting into the track. Technological progress, however, is inevitable. With designs already mimicking natural claws, it may not be long before cushioned pads replace spikes entirely, offering safer and faster alternatives for the next generation of sprinters.